Okay, good evening. This is the call of the Wilmette Public Library, February 15th, 2022, uh, monthly board meeting to order at 6.36 p.m. Welcome, and all notices have been published in the usual places, and we are meeting remotely per the government's, the governor's direction of the ability that we can do that. And trustee and director Austin is at the library, so we have fulfilled that obligation. So can we have the roll call, please? Certainly. Uh, trustee Fishman. Here. Trustee Nealon. Here. Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Riddle. Present. And trustee Summer. Here. Trustee Wolf. Here. And Trustee McDonald. Present. Thank you. All right. We are also joined by um, four staff members. I see Jessica Thompson, Leah White, John Risco, Marty Belfontaine, and myself, Anthony Austin, at the library. Thank you. This is the time that we have for public comment. Being that we have no public here, we will move on to review of the draft minutes. Can we have approval of the minutes? I can do that. Okay. Um, I move approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of January 18th, 2022, as presented. Thank you. I will second the motion. And okay, it's been moved by Trustee Summer and seconded by Trustee Wolf to approve the minutes from the January 18th, 2022 meeting. Is there any discussion or questions regarding those minutes? Okay. Being that there are none, can we have the roll call for approval? Certainly. Trustee Fishman? Approved. Yes. Trustee Nealon? Approved. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. And at this time, we're going to turn it over for you to introduce us to the Assistant Director, Leah White. Director Austin. Thank you. Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. All right, well, it gives me great pleasure this evening to introduce you to our new assistant director, Leah White. Um, Leah is starting her second week with us in our entirely new role as assistant director. Uh, she directly oversees five public service departments, including adult services, youth services, circulation, shelving switchboard and digital services, in addition to her supportive administrative duties. Um, by introduction, Leah joins us from the Skokie Public Library, where she served on the management and administrative teams for the past five years as their learning and development manager. Uh, prior to that role, she was the head of popular services at the ELA Public Library in Lake Zurich, and she was a reader services librarian at both the Northbrook and Morton Grove Public Libraries. Uh, Leah is the co-author of two ALA professional book titles and was honored as a 2012 Library Journal Mover and Shaker for community building. Leah holds her MLS from Dominican University and a number of associated leadership and training certifications. She's active in a number of planning committees and has demonstrable understanding of the library industry on both the micro and macro levels. Um, as we will see here in a moment, Leah is passionate about libraries, leadership, planning, staff success, equity, diversity, and inclusion initiatives, and community outcomes. And above all, she has a warm, friendly, enthusiastic, and engaging personality, and that has already made a positive impact here on our team. Uh, we're confident that Leah will be a tremendous asset to our team as we continue our organizational growth and development. So please join me in welcoming Leah to Wilmette Public Library. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, hey, Leah. Hi. I I'm so happy to be here. I I'm just positively thrilled. It's been such a whirlwind of a week and one day. I even got to be there for Winterfest, which was just such a beautiful and wonderful event to be at. Um, I'm just really thrilled to be here with you all and to be joining such an outstanding team and distinguished institution. Happy to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Leah? 
That was nice to hear your enthusiasm. And that that description just fit you so perfectly now that we <laughs> see your face. Oh, and thanks. Your voice. Welcome. This is Thank a really you. great, I agree. Anthony's running a, a, a great, um, a great team there. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're part of it. Leah, we look forward to working with you, especially on the strategic plan based on your prior experience. I'm thrilled. It's such an exciting time to join the organization. I, I am absolutely and completely excited. Okay. Thank you. It was nice to see you on Saturday with your son. Did he have a great time? Oh, he just loved it. I'm so happy too, because my son obviously is such a big part of my life. I have a four-year-old son named Hugo and um, he really loves the library now. That's who so. was in the yellow pants. Yes. I couldn't tell you with the mask. Okay. Now I know who Hugo. <laughs> okay. I remember Hugo. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. He's got a big personality and he is going to spend a lot of time at the Wilmot Public Library. <laughs> I like so them, yeah, we we Thanks. had a wonderful time. Winterfest okay. was just truly such a wonderful opportunity to see the community, to see our staff doing some of the things that they do best. Mm -hmm. And it was a really beautiful event to see after so much isolation in the past few years. So it, it was just a really great experience. And I'm glad my son got to got to meet you all too. Great, great. We were so delighted. Yeah, it was exciting. It, there was so much energy and just, you know, right, to see all the families coming through the vestibule and outside and buying books at Books Down Under and when, uh, oh, I'm going to blow whatever her name, blow her name, yeah, when, uh, when she waltzed a... in. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. It... The place was out on fire. It was great. It was so the character. great. The special guest. Elsa. The special guest. Elsa. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I'm out of it. Yes. Elsa. Okay. Hugo said, just like in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you. Okay, Tracy, we're going to move, move over to uh, Trustee Summer for the Treasures Report. Uh, good you. evening, everybody. Um, I'm sure, Okay, so I have, it's kind of long, but it's just hang on. Um, so in the revenue section, first, John did a great job as usual on the report. And I'm sure you all read it in as much detail as I did, but just in case you didn't, um, the PPRT, which is the Illinois replacement tax, as indicated in the report, was budgeted for 45,000, but we are way ahead as of now at about 63,000. So I went back and looked at the monthly data from previous years, as well as the annual bunch of historical data. And we've been trending upward since at least 2018, which was in 2018, it was actually 45,000 was our income. And I think this year we're already, and last year at the end of the year, it was 70,000. So the, my only comment on this is when we do our budgeting this year at the, uh, you know, we just need to be more mindful of having a more accurate, um, look a little more closely at the historical data to come up with a little bit better of a, an estimated income item. Does anybody have any questions on that? Yes, Spina. So Tracy, you said we were ahead of the art revenue so far. Yes. So right, we budgeted for the year 45,000 in income. We currently have received 63,000 and we still have March, April, and May to go. So I looked at historical data. March, March tends to be pretty low. April and May tends to have maybe, I'll throw out a number, maybe seven to 10,000 ish. You know, it could be different. Additional, right? Additional. So we will be way over uh, budget. So just as a, and I talked to Anthony about this already, that we will just be, um, it's kind of been the highlighted to be put in your folder when we do the budgeting. That's an item that we will need to just take a little more care with. But it's good. It's a good thing, if anything. Oh, it's a great it's a thing. Good, oh, yeah. So we're just paying attention thing. to it because it's over, you know, it's right. not an extraordinary overage. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Okay, I mean, in the big scheme. Um, there's a $59,000-ish check to the Wellness Insurance Network. That's our semi-annual insurance payment. Um, I'm sure you all noticed there was a check to the Libraries of Illinois Risk Agency in the amount of $40,303. But if you look at it, it's coded um, account 7,500, which is our insurance. But if you look on the expenditure line, um, this shows an expense of only 27,500. 
The difference really is um, it gets a little convoluted, but our prior auditor had us budget this way. So part of it is actually in the expenditures, like our operating expenses, and some of it is also in um, a li the liability fund, which is account 94,000. Going forward, it's all it, when we do our budget this year, going to next year, it's going to all be in the liability fund. It's not really necessarily anything that's discretionary. It is something we have to have. Um, our property casualty insurance. I think what the other thing in there is workman's comp. So we are going to put it in a separate fund, levy for it separately so that it is absolutely positively covered. Um, does anybody have any questions on that? I'm sure you all caught that. <laughs> all right. Um, there's a check to Arthur J. Gallagher. That's our unemployment insurance. Um, pass on that. Um, the CD rates are rising a little bit. And we were able to purchase the CD with a 1% rate in February, which is subsequent to the date of the financial statements. Um, there's a large decrease in the North Shore MaxSafe general fund with a similar increase in the special reserve fund. That basically is the transfer of the funds from the general fund to the special reserve fund as we approved in the last, in one of our previous meetings. Uh, you also may notice that the CIBC money market fund had a large decrease. Most, like very significant, most of those you'll see um, was to purchase CDs, which is you can see online, 11,000 general fund CDs. And that's all I have on the financials. Does anybody have any questions on any of the checks? Anything that I explained? Uh, did I miss anything? No, okay. Um, Thank you. You bet. Does anyone want to um, make a motion to pay the bills and salary? I move approval of the bills and salaries check detail for January 20. 22. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved by Lisa McDonald and seconded by Stuart Wolf to move approval of the bills and salary check detail for January 2022. Can we have a roll call? Director? Certainly. Uh, Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle? Yes. Trustee Summer? Yes. And Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. Okay. Let's move right on. Now it's been passed unanimously, the bills and salaries. Check detail for January 2022nd. Okay, there are no action items. And at this point, we would like, uh, Director Austin will update us on the Capital Repairs Project update, which he sent a, earlier a list of what was left on the punch list. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll update you all from the email that I sent you over the weekend. So the project, as you know, is substantially complete. We're right on budget. We've got allowances to cover any of the remaining costs associated with the closeout of this project. And further, as you know, we've been able to address a number of additional items um, that have been concerning to us, um, even outside of the scope of this project that came up either during the project or were presented as opportunities for us um, by our skilled crews. So the improvements that we've made on this project as a result um, uh, so far are, exceed everything that we had imagined that we had planned for this project at the outset. Um, and while we know that our patrons are largely not going to immediately see or really experience the impact of a lot of the things that we've accomplished, um, overall, from a capital standpoint, the impacts on this project are really quite remarkable and enduring. Um, and really highlight the importance of this long range capital planning process that we've been on for the, the past like 18 months or so. Um, so there are a few items that still remain on our project, including our pending late opening uh, for the fire alarm system testing and staff safety drill. You may recall that we had planned that for early in January and um, we needed to defer that, uh, that closure. So that is still planning uh, to go forward here by the end of the month or in the next couple of weeks. So our crews are targeting a Friday morning. It's one of our lower trafficked days and it would not impact any, any of our programming that we have planned. Um, so we're potentially targeting um, February 25th or March 4th for that. 
Um, we hope to finalize the plan this week and then begin our communications about that noon opening on whichever of the selected days we go forward with. Uh, so the current punch list includes a few items that still remain. Uh, completion of any of the remaining patching and painting finish work. Um, we did go into a number of walls on this project, and so there is a bit of cleanup there uh, for aesthetic purposes. Um, related to that, there are a lot of ceiling tiles that have been um, uh, that need to be changed out as a result of the work with the fire alarm system. So we're, we're swapping out a lot of the ceiling tiles that have been damaged and also replacing some of them that may have been stained over the years. Uh, we're going to be upgrading three of our exterior security cameras, and those are on order and will be installed as soon as they can come in. Um, as you know, we did update a number of our emergency exit doors, and there's one exit uh, panic bar door hardware that's still on order that needs to be replaced, so that lingers. And then uh, probably the biggest part of the project that hasn't been able to be completed is really due to the seasonal work of it, and that is the replacement of the exterior curtain wall pressure plates and any of the glazing work that needs to be done. This is um, the area that, that contains the vestibule and the periodicals room. Uh, that large glass enclosure um, had some uh, water infiltration issues that you may recall that we identified very early in the project. And uh, there, were, there were some delays in, in acquiring that equipment to replace the, uh, the pressure plates. So once the weather um, is better here in March, April, we'll be able to proceed with that project. Um, and that will be taken care of post-project. And we've already been billed for that. So it's really just taking care of the labor and installation. Uh, so like I said, we hope to coordinate the final billing and closeouts here in the coming weeks. And I would say hopefully by this time next month, the project will have achieved closure and we can, we can close this chapter. Um, and then we rinse and repeat. Uh, the next phase of our plan <laughs> capital repairs project will be far less invasive though this time around. This is the most invasive set of work that we had for the 20 year time frame that we've been looking at. Um, and primarily what we'll focus on with, with the next phase is going to be optimization of the building automation system. Uh, that's some of the HVAC related equipment and trying to uh, synchronize all of those to a, a single interface. Um, so we'll be talking about the technology improvements that are associated with that. Uh, there may be some other equipment that are, that's related to that that we might build into a future construction project, um, such as replacing the generator or, or some other um, automation equipment like that. Uh, but that's that's kind of where we're at on the capital repair project at the moment. Um, do you have any questions? Yes, Joan. Um, Anthony, I do. Um, I won't ask you about the specific placements of the security cameras, but I know we had talked about upgrading in the parking lot. Does that is that included in your identification there to upgrade the three? Correct. That, that is the area that we're looking at. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions about the project? Okay. <clears throat> that concludes my update of the capital repair project. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the director's report. So I will just continue on and continue rambling. Um, okay, so um, uh, the first item I wanted to share with you, we've already kind of discussed here today, and that was the kickoff of the sesquicentennial celebration in the village, and that was this past Saturday. We celebrated Winterfest all around Wilmette, and at Wilmette Library specifically, we drew over 1,000, nearly 1,000 patrons to the library on Saturday. Um, this is by far the busiest day at Wilmette Library in, well, since the pandemic. Um, so we were really thrilled about that. Um, we hosted a number of activities for all ages all around the library, including uh, local history trivia, an indoor story walk, an ice lantern maker activity, and as you noted earlier, a visit by a special guest, Elsa the Snow Queen. Um, and that was quite the photo op for a number of families um, as we were included in a lot of social media uh, related to that. Um, we were also a featured stop in the village-wide ice sculpture exhibits. And um, if you haven't had a chance to see the ice sculpture in person, you better do it tomorrow because it's gonna be 50. <laughs> um, but there have been a lot of ice sculptures around town and there were a lot of events um, all around the, the village. 
um, including um, the sculptor actually doing a number of those ice sculptures. Um, Joan was here in the vestibule that day as an ambassador directing um, attendees of our events to other events around the village. Um, Joan, do you want to share anything about what your experience was in the vestibule engaging with folks? Well, uh, hats off to the uh, youth services because they had a great uh, maker project going on and it was really fun. All ages participated and then they took their little make this what they made and then had to go outside and freeze and um, everybody seemed to follow what they needed to do and do that and then lots of families I, I was so delighted to see as many young families all ages I mean all young and old coming in and um, I think it was great that we had friends of the library outside for team. Tracy was part of that. And, um, uh, you know, so many others that were uh, out there and that brought people to the library. It was just a lot of fun and, and a lot of excitement. And um, uh, it was it was great. I, I was up on Ridge Road earlier in the morning when they were actually doing a uh, creating an ice sculpture. And that was very cool that to see them with their chainsaws and uh, blow torches and um, all over the village. There's a lot down in uh, the village green and um, in front of Fourth the Chamber at Fourth and Linden Chalet. But the ones especially, there was a goal also, I should just say of the committee to bring in um, representation from uh, so many groups who maybe haven't participated and um, a uh, Indian group and Southeast Asia group and um, those are all down on uh, Village Green and as you say now's the time today and or tomorrow because they'll be gone probably in the next couple of days but uh, I think that was really fun and they were giving away Lisa was there at a table giving away um, mugs that said uh, celebration she had some cold toes I, I, I it's impossible not to it was a lot of fun in the village they did it's just the beginning of the it's the kickoff of the whole year so something for everybody. That's great. Thank you, Joan. And I, I appreciate the note about the Friends as well. Yes, the, the Friends of the Library did host a pop-up book sale outdoors. Um, and it's my understanding that they sold nearly 400 books um, from outside, um, which is, that's really reflects, I think, our community's um, interest in um, having their own personal copies of books to take home to um, and, and taking them there. So that I'm, the friends really did a fabulous job in helping to join in the celebration as well. Mm -hmm. um, so those pop-up sales are, are a really great way for, for the friends to, to generate interest and draw attention down to, um, to Books Down Under. Um, yes, as Joan said, this is the kickoff event for the sesquicentennial and the library is going to be partnering with a number of agencies around the community to help celebrate um, uh, the village's birthday this year. Uh, so stay tuned for a lot more about that as we go forward. Um, so the thousand visitors that we had in the library on Saturday was certainly a big day and a hallmark for us. Um, and as you as we get into my report, you'll see that we had um, just over a thousand visitors in the library in January. So to get a thousand and one Saturday is a big deal, and I think a signal that things are, are starting to shift. Another signal of that in terms of our output measures is looking at our circulation. In January, we circulated over 54,000 items, or nearly 54,000 items rather, and that's looking a lot much, much more like our pre-pandemic numbers where we would typically circulate about 60,000 in January. So we're really encouraged by um, the engagement that we're seeing with, um, from the community. Um, a lot of folks still taking advantage of parking lot pickup, especially in this cold weather. Um, but uh, certainly uh, heavy use of the collections and continued engagement with um, the virtual programming. Um, as we have been virtual up to this point, we're starting to do some more in-person programming this week. Um, so back to circulation, about 50% of our circulation these days is coming off of our self-checkouts. As you know, we've got seven self-checkout units around the library, and the majority of the circulation off of those is coming from our youth services um, uh, self-checkout stations. And um, those that is also, as you've noted in our report, is our highest use collection. Um, 
I was thrilled to note again that uh, two thirds of our registered cardholders have been active in just the last six months. So again, talking about uh, community engagement, um, we've refined our, our da database to make sure that we're only counting the number of library cards that are active in our, in our uh, records and our patrons continue to be using um, the, the resources very actively. Um, okay, a couple other items to note. Um, Winter Reading Club continues on through the balance of February. Um, so we're seeing great participation to date and we'll be able to give you more statistics about um, the engagement with uh, Winter Reading Clubs at the March meeting. Um, I mentioned programming. Um, we've got a lot of maker appointments that are coming up this month. We're seeing tremendous engagement and we're encouraging staff to participate in the maker appointments as well so that everyone on the team is aware of what type of programming that we're offering so that we can do more word of mouth marketing and everyone feels comfortable with it and has a chance to join in the fun because it is a lot of fun. Um, we are ramping up training and resources to make more videos. Um, as you know, our November meeting was in person and uh, that was our first time using um, the auditorium to host a board meeting, but also our first time creating our own video. And we have a, a now a, visit, a resident videographer on our team and Linnea Lundberg, who works in our digital services team. And she and Christine Hightower, uh, along with Fred Wallace, have been doing a lot of training to uh, enhance the sophistication of our videos. And uh, hopefully that will translate over to our virtual programming um, via Zoom as well. Um, other digital resources this month, um, we did complete our easy proxy uh, server project. Um, Jillian McEwen, adult services manager, was a big project for her to um, enhance the accessibility of all of our virtual databases. And uh, we were able to cross that off our list this month. So we were thrilled to do that. Um, there are a number of other highlights in my report, but I'm just curious at this point, if you have any specific questions and I can address any of those. Can I ask a question? I'm gonna ask a quick question. You sure. mentioned that um, they've been working on those remote, I can't think of how you would describe it, the remote services. Uh, had they done a public training for that? And if not, would they consider doing another one? You know, like I, I ran into someone at a blood drive and I was talking, he was a business guy who works from home. And I happened to mention, and he had no idea that we had all these available. I don't know, even know what all are available. You mean have the we, proxy server? The proxy uh, server, okay. yes. And all the, so have we one done a public training? And if we have, can we do another one? We certainly can. Um, last week, we, we held an event for the chamber. Um, and so there were a number of, uh, of folks in the community who participated in that. I, I actually think President McDonald might have attended that, that program as well, um, where our business librarian, John Amundsen, did an introduction mm -hmm. of some of our business resources there. Um, but yes, there is certainly much more that we can do to, to promote the digital resources that we have and to enhance the access. In terms of training to access these, actually part of the purpose of the easy proxy server was to simplify access. Um, you really only will need to sign on once when trying to access any of these resources from our website. Um, so hopefully it won't require a lot of handholding, but I think the actual promotion of what the resources are um, and what type of research you can do with all of these tools is something that we aim to enhance the promotion of this year. You know what, maybe that's a better description. I mean, I, I could figure out how to log in, but I don't even know as a what all the services are available. Well, one of the things that happened with the chamber, 16 people sh had registered for it, but only probably four showed up. And so I, there's an opportunity, I think, to do many recordings because I found it very informative in terms of, and I would just be happy to see the recording and do it on demand because I think that's especially important for the, if somebody's in a small business, they might not could have gotten away, which is why I think the turnout was lower than what was anticipated. But because I think it was a joint chamber, they uh, in talking to Anthony, they could not record that. But I think that is one of the opportunities is to make so many videos, just highlighting each of the different services. But it was a fabulous workshop. I love the idea, Lisa, of having some sort of a tape that you I could like I could email my friend and just say, hey, here's the link. Here's all that's available. Just re I think it's a great idea. Great. Thank you for that. Any other questions or comments from the director's report or anything else that's on your mind about library operations this month? Did you want to talk about
thing with the mask, update us on the mask policy, or were you going to go that, cover that next? Yeah, we can. I can tell you a little bit about where we're at on this. So as you know, the governor um, has moved to lift the masking requirements effective um, after February 28th. Um, and so that is definitely going to be changing the culture of our community and how people are using um, public spaces as well as businesses and so on. Um, so a lot of relaxing of guidelines is going to be taking place here very soon. That said, um, the library has made a lot of its decisions, well, all of its decisions regarding the pandemic um, have been data-driven. Um, we've been using a, a number of tools to determine what the rate of transmission is in our community in an effort to help protect community health um, as well as staff health. Um, so um, right now, if you look at our, at our data sources, we're still showing that there is a high rate of transmission of COVID um, with the Omicron variant in our community. Um, as that number continues to in decline, and it is in decline, um, I think by the end of this month, we may even well see ourselves in a period where there is going to be moderate or less transmission of the virus, um, at which time I think it would be entirely appropriate for us to move forward with that. Um, at this moment, though, it just it doesn't feel like it is the right decision to make to um, to suspend the masking inside the library, especially knowing that we still have the under five crowd uh, that is unvaccinated at this point. That said, um, we do know that there is going to be um, community pressure around this topic um, and that a number of people have already decided that the pandemic is over and that masking is over. So um, there's a lot of balancing that we need to do as a result of this and a lot of discussion. Um, I do believe that the staff by and large still feels that they're going to continue to wear masking for, for any number of, uh, wear their masks for any number of reasons. Um, and uh, we will likely move to an environment where we encourage, recommend uh, that the public continue to wear masks in here as well. Um, however, enforcement will likely uh, decline in the coming weeks. Um, at the moment, I can't pinpoint a specific date that we are going to discontinue requiring masks inside the library as I wanna make that decision based upon the local data. Um, but I do think that it could very likely uh, coincide with um, the governor's uh, declaration as well. So stay tuned, we will have that information posted on the website. Anthony, have you heard from other uh, neighboring libraries of their intent? I think that, that a number of libraries are all facing the same situation and are, are using the same metrics to, to make these determinations. Um, it's been a very stressful period for all agencies trying to police masking. Um, the high rate of vaccinations in our community, I think, is a really great uh, indicator that we're making a turn for community health. Um, but I think the time for masking is, is drawing to a close for a number of agencies, including public libraries. And then one other question, um, village wide between village, we know schools are, are on the, you know, in a different category, but I'm thinking village and uh, park district. Are you, I'm sure you're discussing with other um, directors. Yeah, we're continuing to evaluate um, the, the responses that other agencies are having in the community and continue to try to align ourselves with the decisions of these other agencies as appropriate. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions or comments about library ops? Um, Are you all, one of the things I noticed is that you uh, videotaped the RFID oh, I think right. it was two weeks ago to put it up online. Are there plans to do some videotapes in terms of highlighting some of the other services? beyond the databases that we offer? Yeah, I think, you know, this is this is our first major video that we've made promoting the, um, the new RFID system on the self checkouts. Um, so once that gets launched, and there's been a lot of a lot involved in terms of getting that production off the ground as it's our first such video. Um, stay tuned, we hope to announce that within the next week. Um, once that's up and running. Um, yes, I think this is definitely a new method for us to use in communicating. Um, any number of bits of news or service announcements that we have. So stay tuned. All right. Does Do that we... conclude your director's report? 
concludes my report. Okay, moving on. Uh, Trustee Nealon, we're moving on to the committee reports. Trustee Nealon, you were going to talk a little, little bit about the strategic planning session uh, for Rails. Yeah, Rails, um, I've discovered, um, has a podcast on strategic planning up on their website, and I can uh, you guys can check that, or I can send you links um, directly to the podcast, which is also on YouTube. Um, and I think it's only about a half an hour, a little less, so I think it should be helpful. Um, its description is Rails Executive Director Deidre Brennan talks with Stephanie Chase, founding principal of Constructive Disruption, which is kind of a cool concept, about the importance of strategic planning. Stephanie gives some good tips for what to do if you have little money or a little time. Um, so I think I'm gonna dive into that a little more. I listened to about 10 minutes of it today and um, uh, see if uh, we can use anything in that. You might wanna check it out. So I'll just send everybody, I'll put the links in an email and send it to all trustees. Thank you. Anything else to report? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, well, we do know about the RLA legislative um, conference, which is coming up on the 21st. So is it, uh, if it's anyone else wants to join? Yeah. yeah. Is there still time for that? If any other trustees want to join, Anthony? Absolutely. If you're interested okay. in registering, just let me know and I'll get you signed up. Um, so far, it's Trustee Nealon and myself that will be attending. And Direct Austin, you were going to send us the palm card from that in terms of what Illinois ILA is. Yep, I will get that to you and a uh, reminder for registration if you're interested. Okay, thanks. Uh, can I interrupt? I actually attended a Rails uh, webinar today on um, uh, inflation and budgeting. Fascinating. Um, but anybody on the finance committee, I would recommend, even if any, it, it was about an hour. I, I actually think it's kind of helpful. It wouldn't be a bad thing to do at some point in the next few months. We can send you the link because it'll be available on Friday. Um, but it was it was very well done. And it just talked about the things that we need to be mindful of, of all the moving pieces. And with inflation as high as it is, I think they said it's 7% for 2021 and 7.5% for January uh, 2022. So um, it's just something that particularly in the budgeting and forecasting we need to be aware of. So I will send a link when it becomes available if anyone has needs a little something to do <laughs> Friday night. Actually, I think that's a good, um, a good idea, Tracy, for us to check that out because um, since we last um, reviewed the ILA, you know, the ILA webinars that we went to mm -hmm. on, um, you know, on budgeting and on, um, you know, several other topics, inflation has hit. So we're going to have to um, adjust, as you say, or think yeah. about it, put it on the table. Yeah. It's a very big, it's a very high overview. I don't know if John went today. I don't know if he was it had available, but he, he can, you can always watch it. It's just, and it was, it was pretty good. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thanks, Tracy. That'd be great. Direct Austin, anything that you have to add regarding ILA rails? And, you know, and you've already put the PLA in your information item. Anything right. Else? The only other item that I would add is um, I did send an email out to you all in late January regarding um, the mm -hmm. Attorney General's office finally getting their training open for uh, FOIA and OMA training. Um, if you would please take a look at that email again, um, and thanks to those who've submitted their OMA training. Um, so everyone on the board should take the OMA training, um, and it's elective if you're interested to take the FOIA as well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and then soon you'll be getting notification that it's time to file your statements of economic interest. I just submitted those forms. Um, so you'll be getting notification about that. I believe those are typically due in May, but just another item to add to your agenda for the near future. Thanks, Anthony. I needed that reminder for the OMA and the FOIA. I think I'm, I know I won't. I won't take until March 31st, but I know that's the due date. Does anyone know how long it takes? Uh, about uh, maybe it. <laughs> go ahead, maybe Tracy. An hour, maybe maybe yeah. an hour. I actually good thought it was really. I actually thought it was really good. I found it a really good thing to take. I thought it was pretty helpful. Good to know. You can come back in two forth. hours. You don't. <laughs> but I was like super obsessive about it. I just but was, you know you, you can know, come back at the to charts. It. And, yeah, yeah. 
you can come back. So you could spend 15 minutes, log out, pause. come back and do pause. And right. it'll take, when you log back in, it takes you right where you were before. Okay, good to know. Thank you. And that statement of economic interest, that doesn't take long. I, I also no, last year sense. put it put it down and it's not it's not um it's not a long form. And I'll confess I did the Freedom of Information Act by mistake and was very proud of myself when I submitted my certificate and that was optional. So <laughs> don't do what I did. That oh, so you're the one who provoked that reminder from Anthony. <laughs> right. Thank you, Joan. Right. Or the clarification. <laughs> Didn't take that long, and I did learn a lot. I got most of them right, but um, <laughs> oops. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, we've already talked about what the 150th birthday, and the next big thing is Memorial Day with a whole bunch of stuff planned for the summer wrapping up in September. And so if you go to the 150 website, you'll see a calendar, and the library is very active in that. So you'll see, but we don't plan as far in advance as they might like us. We generally do two to three months in advance. So that's just for your information. Who's they? And, you mean, uh, you mean um, your the committee library wants, wants is co-hosting a lot of events, but I think the committee wanted this stuff like a year in advance. We do about oh, three months okay. in advance because you're waiting to see what's happening with COVID and everything else Yeah. in terms of what's available. But Anthony and his staff are on it. Okay. And also, I think what they were pushing uh, were bricks for Wilmette Way, which is the alley. They're selling bricks and they're also selling uh, trees in terms of along uh, Glenview Road. They want to do a whole alleyway. So if you go to Wilmette 150, you'll see all of them. That's what we were sort of passing out on Saturday. Thank you. Okay. We've hit all the information items. Uh, Anthony, do you want to talk a little bit more about if someone wants to attend the PLA virtually? Yeah, so um, if you're interested, go to placonference.org and you can learn a little bit more about the Public Library Association. Um, it's a biannual conference. Um, for me, it's, it's the best conference in our industry. Um, I will be physically attending this one. Um, and I think I'm the only one who's going to be going physically uh, to this year. Um, there is a virtual component. Um, they do not offer a dedicated uh, trustee day like they do for ILA. Um, there are select programs that may be of interest to trustees. Um, if you go to the website and you're of, if you see anything of interest there to you, um, you're welcome to attend and you can attend any of the conferences. Um, but uh, let me know if there's if you have an interest in that and um, your obviously your continuing education is also covered by our um, professional development. Okay. And now it's the time for new business or old new business because old business we don't talk about new old business goes in the agenda. Basically, so new business. One of the things is basically meeting in person. In terms of what your thoughts are given that the governor says we can still it's an emergency so we still can meet virtually up at this point in time so just want to know what your pleasure is for the march meeting i'm happy to meet lisa i i might still mask i know i just kind of put that out there if i feel comfortable masking still and i know everybody has different preferences but mm -hmm. i'd love to meet okay i would too because we are i, I was gonna say I'm happy to meet on Zoom. It enables me to meet Zooming from anywhere, but I can meet in person. So uh, I will go with whatever, but okay. I like Zooming because I can do it from, I, I have, have to, to be in yeah. met. I have to say, I think Zooming is, is so easy and um, saves some time on the front and the back end. So that would be my vote. To stay so just, with Zoom. Just to show the fans of all those that prefer to do Zoom, this is just a strove. Let's see if I got everybody. Okay. So one, two, three, four, four of seven. Okay. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> so we'll meet via Zoom, but for our Don't strategic you guys like planning to just meeting. Get in your car and go out in the snow and go to the library. I mean, it's, <laughs> come on, no. people. 
<laughs> see people in person, yeah. Not see now. people in person, you know, not, not look at little squares, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, for our strategic planning meeting, will it be hybrid, Anthony? Because I'll be there in person, but I think that fosters discussion. All right. So that's that's the next our next item of discussion here, and that okay. is the strategic planning retreat. Um, so we've circulated um, the doodle polls around, and uh, the winning date right now is Thursday, March 10th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, we've got um, uh, appears to be the full participation of the board as well as the full participation of the leadership team. So that's great. great. Um, right now, we're trying to nail down the exact location for where we can hold our meeting. Um, we're, we haven't heard back yet from um, the two folks that we've reached out to. We're, we're looking at either the Lakeview Center um, at Gilson or at Mallinckrodt, where we did this back in 2017. Um, so um, thinking is probably going to be Mallinckrodt, but we'll see if they're available. Um, so hold the date. Um, in fact, you know what, after this meeting, I will send an, an invite out so that you've got something on your calendars. Um, interesting question, Lisa, about the hybrid option. Um, I don't think that that's something that we may be able to technologically accomplish very easily. I think we could. Um, but I, I would really, I, I think we would get far better engagement if we could get everyone physically together. It's in the hard to do. Together. Yeah. Um, if you never, the people that are in person rarely see the people that are on the remotely. It's, it's a technical nightmare. So we will do so everything that we can to make it um, a comfortable event for everyone um, to get a room that's large enough for us to spread out and yet still hear everyone. So we'll try to balance all of those things um, at the same time. Um, since we are going to be meeting for an extended duration, we'll also figure out what we can do to help keep people um, fed and, and with refreshments as well. So we'll, we'll work on those details. We're working on a program um, and uh, some uh, you know, some events to, to go along with this to generate conversation and to help us get to know one another uh, so that we've got a productive conversation. So stay tuned for a little bit more communication about it. Yeah, Fina. Anthony, I wasn't sure if you were choosing only, you know, Wilmette um, spots, I'm like a village or park district because, you know, the women's club of Wilmette, I had a tour there recently and their, their space is quite big too. And I know they're open you know, to having big groups again. So if that, if you were having trouble, that might be another option. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, Fina. Also, given the Open Meetings Act, the public can show up. That's right. Just to, I don't know if they need to reserve or do they just show up, Anthony? We just need to publish that that is an open meeting and um, okay. we'll, we'll post it in our usual locations and on our website. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? And I suppose I should add by, you know, to that that last comment there that um, there will be opportunity for the public to engage. This particular planning session is really oriented towards the board and the staff, but there will clearly be more opportunities for the public to engage and provide feedback to help inform the strategic plan as we go forward. And one of the goals is for the trustees to have a better understanding of the different departments in terms of what they do and what they're looking forward to in the future and what some of their pain points are overall trends as i keep bugging anthony so thank you <laughs> okay thank you so at this time being that there is no addition no new no additional new business or old business we will go into closed session and we'll reconvene after the closed session and the purpose of the closed meeting is to perform the annual review of the director's performance and compliance with 5 ILCS 120-2C1. So is there a, and the reason why we're going out and then in is so we have two separate recordings because we couldn't figure out how to go into a breakout and then come back. So that's why we got to go off and in. So is there Scott, a I, I, move, I move that we go into closed session to perform the annual review of the director's performance and compliance with 5 ILCS 120 <laughs> forward slash 2C parentheses 1. So. Okay. Awesome. Is I'll there a second? second? I'll second. Okay. It's been moved by Wolf 
and seconded by Trustee Fishman that we go into closed session to discuss the um, director's evaluation and uh, review his work and think of what we would like to add to what he has already provided for next year. So thank you. And so if you all leave now and go to the new link and let That's me vote. Get... Let's vote. Oh yeah, we got a vote. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? I think we can do it by affirmation. Do we need a roll call? Anthony? We're going to do a roll call. Trustee okay. Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle. Yes. Trustee Summer. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Yes. And Trustee McDonald. Yes. Thank okay. you. And okay. It is 9.04 p.m. and we have come out of closed session and we're back to our regular meeting. And during the closed session, what we did was evaluate the director and discuss the salary, his salary. We are very pleased with the work that Anthony has done during COVID period and how he has been accessible and kept things moving and been innovative during tumultuous times. And he's been a patient and steady rock for both the public, the trustees, and the staff. We went into closed session and increased his salary to 5%, which is retroactive to 7121, which makes his salary $138,600. And that we will start reviewing his salary on a regular basis in conjunction with the budgeting and the staff in July. And so thank you. So is there any other business? Can we have a motion to adjourn? A motion we adjourn this meeting so you can get to California. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we adjourn this meeting at nine. It's been moved that we adjourn this meeting at 905. Is there a second? I'll second. Trustee Fishman. Trustee Wolf is moved. Trustee Fishman is seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you and have a good evening and thanks for your patience and thanks for your thoughtful time put into doing the evaluation. Every Thank time. you for coordinating with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Anthony. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody. Board members. It's a pleasure to be on the board.